All right, just wanted to make a quick video answering a common Calvinist proof text they use to defend their false doctrine of limited atonement. And you're going to see this is based on the fact that Calvinism is eisegetical. Basically, they'll come to the Bible with a pre-commitment to their theology and read their own doctrine into the text. And you're going to see that with all the, because I'm going to do a series of videos answering their proof text for limited atonement. And you're going to see that there is none of these verses say anything about the atonement being limited. You know, none of these verses they use even imply a limited atonement. You know, so they, they read their own theology into the text and they, they, they do the uh, logical fallacy of negative inference. And I'm going to explain what that is as I just read the verse. So the, one of the verses they try to use is Matthew chapter 1, verse number 21. And you're going to see uh, the fact that this verse is, is consistent with their other verses of the fact that there is no, nothing about the atonement, the extent of it being taught in this text. So here it is, Matthew 1, 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now, what they do with this verse, because there's nothing in this verse that is talking about the extent of the atonement. And also what they do is that, is that again, it's the, the logical fallacy of negative inference. So they think his people must be to the exclusion of the non-elect. There's two problems there. First of all, nowhere does the text say anything about only his people. So what happens is you have eisegesis. They approach the Bible, they have this pre-commitment. And instead of the Bible telling them what it says, they're inserting their own doctrine into the text. So he shall save his people. They'll read it as he shall only save his people from their sins. Now, that's the first problem. Second problem, who is the his people? What's it referring to in the text? Now, another problem with Calvinism is they will not compare scripture with scripture because context is one thing they never do. Context kills Calvinism, but another thing that kills Calvinism is comparing scripture with scripture. And that his people is referring to the children of Israel. It's not talking about the, the elect, and they mean it as basically the Calvinists, okay? Uh, Luke chapter one, verse 68 down to verse 80 says, blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people and hath raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. And he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies, and, oh, sorry, and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers, and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he sware to our father Abraham, that he would grant unto us, that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called a prophet, sorry, prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of, oh, sorry, by the remission of their sins. And through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring, sorry, the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, and was in the desert till the day of his showing unto Israel. Okay, the his people is talking about Israel. It's not talking about the the elect. And they mean again, they mean the elect as God choosing people for salvation, predestining them, and they have no free will to to you know basically accept or reject the gospel. I mean, if that's the case, what's the point of even preaching the gospel at all? I mean, I mean, and again, I've covered this in another video, so I'm not going to reiterate on that. But you notice how their proof text does, again, not only does it not teach limited atonement, it doesn't explicitly say it, nor does it even implicitly say it. It's just simply the, the uh, logical fallacy of negative inference. They have to insert their own theology into the text. So his people must, they read it as only his people. But then again, you have that issue where his people is talking about the children of Israel. It's not talking about the Calvinists or the elect as, as how they would define it. So another example of how their proof text, when you actually study it, because you see, when they say, I, I became a Calvinist when I read the Bible, that's actually not true. They became a Calvinist when a Calvinist preacher told them what the Bible says. If you actually just read the Bible itself, you will not find Calvinism anywhere taught. Plain and simple. You know. So I wanted to show you guys that. Don't be deceived by Calvinism. It is a Gnostic heresy, uh, denying free will, denying accountability of your own sins. They'll, they'll, they'll try to say that's not what they teach, but if you have no free will to accept or reject Christ, then that means that God is totally unjust to punish you in hell because he's punishing you for something you had no ability to. You know, he's punishing you in hell for rejecting his son, even though you had no ability to do so anyway. You know, plain and simple. So, and Calvinists will try to deny that. Oh, we don't teach that. 
Uh, that is exactly what they, they may not like that terminology, that wording, but the, the concept is what they teach. So anyway, I could cover that in other videos I already have. So anyway, don't be deceived by Calvinism. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.